We are all a little depraved and debaucherous. Yes, we are. Here is the king of podcasts. We haven't talked about sugar daddies and sugar babies for a while, and it's about time that I go ahead and bring that back into the mix here. So this is King of Podcasts, the Praise and Debaucherous, back once again. Let's go and talk about it. Because a story came from, well, a thread from Reddit caught my attention. It's r slash sugar lifestyle forum. And somebody on there wrote a question and says, when did seeking or seeking arrangement become a site full of escorts in denial? That's one of those areas that I always talked about that I haven't really talked about enough about for the guys that are going to go ahead and take the risk of going after being a sugar daddy, thinking that they can find something promising with a girl that will cut through the bullshit and just do what they want with them for the money and get the prettiest girl, get the most, you know, lavish looking girl out there that will just appreciate being spoiled and will not give you, and you don't have the headache of taking her home and keeping her with you in a relationship. It's just a hookup. So this Reddit user makes the point and says, it seems the entire idea of a sugar arrangement has lost in the vast majority of girls on there. It's all paper meat and no interest in anything long term. I'm sure my last look a couple of years ago, it was a very different place. <laughs> a sugar baby writes on here and talks about that. It's the same for sugar babies. I literally quit after four great years. It's not the same anymore. I still have my main sugar daddy of one year. I keep a few clients for central massage instead of sorting through the trash to find a second sugar daddy, a second sugar daddy. She talks about getting tired of endless messages. And when I think I found someone normal, one of the following happens. Wasn't interested in a platonic meet and greet or any formal date offered a shitty one-sided arrangement a very low paper meet that was laughable things were going perfect talking about meet and greet finally made it around then he ruined it by asking for nudes one that a man that clearly wanted unprotected sex offered a fair allowance but absolutely wild stipulations one of the sugar baby to work hand and knee for every penny not even worth it at that point and then everything seemed great maybe too good to be true and they drop off the face of the earth so this is all being brought on here and other women come on and say, Oh, well it's been the worst in the sugar bowl in nearly a decade. And a guy th- assumes it was the women who were the only ones I'm interacting with who had change. I want to text as little as possible and just meet and see if there's anything there. No nonsense with paper meter allowance, quite generous. And yet the majority of responses I get are for online only selling content or strictly platonic. I used to see these griffs once in a blue moon. Now they're the majority. Doesn't make me any happier to hear you ladies have it bad also. So yes, with every dating site, even sugar dating and even sugar daddies and sugar babies are being affected by this. And then you see the stories that are out there of hookup culture, which is part of the thing where it's fine if you want to go ahead and be depraved and debaucherous and hook around, hook up and hook, you know, fool around. But when you put money into it and when the women and the men can't come together on, you know, hooking up and just realizing, okay, let's just have some fun. First of all, putting a price tag on it is crazy. Second, not going through the motions of being able to go ahead and hook up with a girl is also crazy. And then the woman thinking, well, I'm just going to use him for what I want and never give him anything is also delusional. So everybody's delusional right now. So even when the sugar daddy, sugar daddy, sugar baby dynamic is starting to falter, that's what's going on right now. Sugar daddies are becoming suckers and sugar babies are becoming delusional and more and more so each day because the wins the modern woman's perspective, because there are some women that if they can't make the means to become that girl boss, right, then they're going to find, they want to find somebody to support in some cases. This is not all women, but there are many women that will understand this plight and they're going through it. And some are very delusional. And you see the stories that are being put out there. I'll tell you one story. Now, don't pick on me about this, but I'm going to use the story anyway. How about Ghana, the country of Ghana? So there's a young lady on here that made headlines when she sued her sugar daddy, who was a banking executive for a bank in Ghana. And she says that no man can promise and fail her because she knows the secret to making men fulfill any promise they make to her. She's enjoying a sweet life. Quote, 
I was teaching promise and failed charm. And somebody said she thinks I needed it most because I met a man and other things. Nobody promises me and fails. I know the secret. Nobody promised me has failed before. When I teach something and you come and write nonsense. So she's saying that the fact that a sugar daddy didn't marry her, this top baking executive, because she's a sugar baby, that she expects to get married. That is what she deserves to get. And that's what she thinks. I think that's crazy. So she had sued this top banking executive who refused to fulfill his promise after agreeing to be in a relationship with him. She began the relationship with a sugar daddy after he started, she started to work at the same bank as a national service personnel. And the sugar daddy was the known to be the chief financial officer of this bank. And among the issues that the lady revealed the, the, triggered the lady to reveal her relationship was the man made some promises to her, but is still refusing to fulfill them. So according to her, her sugar daddy promised to take care of her and also divorce his wife to marry her. And seeing the man was refusing to stick to his words, she decided to sue him in court for breach of agreement. This young lady lost the case and was fined by the court to pay uh, $6,000 or $6,000. Uh, I don't know what this currency is in Ghana, but yeah, she was ordered to pay court fees. And for the trouble that was caused. And that was one of the things that was brought in the story. It's like, wow, that is wild. And she was money hungry. And whatever this guy decided to say that he was going to go ahead and divorce his wife to be with her, the guy's a sucker. But meanwhile, this woman thinks that she was going to go ahead and hold on to him. She was being delusional thinking that this guy was going to drop his wife for her. I mean, you know, I think of J.R. Union when I think about this, you know, you know, you just flew on the little cupcake, your tramp. <laughs> I still love that. I love that you use those phrases on that show in Dallas. Okay. Sorry. I'm, I'm watching a lot of Dallas. I'm in season 13 of the show right now. And now this goes along with the fact that there are women that are trying to blackmail because obviously she was going to go and try to approach the wife or go to court and call him out. Oh Yeah. He's an idiot for doing this, but she decided to go and do this to him. She got nothing from this, except now she's called out for herself, for her delusional aspects. And now who's going to want her? Because now she's a nuisance. When she could just move on to the next guy and realize this guy wasn't serious. Okay. When you realize that you think that, oh, well, you make promises, you can fulfill promises. And you think that you're so good. And what you have between your legs is so good that you can keep a guy to stay with you no matter what, you're delusional. When there's a hookup culture here, the women don't understand that the guys hooking up is just for the sex and they don't want to be anywhere else in this. But the women, they want to have some kind of an emotional component with this. They want to be able to have not just the money, not just the perks. They want to have the experience. They want not to be wined and dined. They want all of it. They want the relationship of the sugar daddy. This whole fantasy that the sugar daddy is not just supposed to go ahead and give the money to her or the gifts to her and spoil her, that he has to also be part of it. And that she also doesn't have to give in anything and keep it just a monogamous meet and greet thinking that she doesn't have to do anything or put out at all to get it. Well, that's wrong. Ladies, you have to understand, I, we did confessions of a sugar daddy. I brought in, you know, our guest and I made the point, And so did he, that women need to understand that there is money that's expected. I don't understand how that's not so hard to understand. So I want to go and play a clip from the Confessions of a Circuit Daddy series where I talked to JL and he made this point here about, about how if sugar babies are expected to have sex. So I want to play this clip. This goes back to March 1st here on the program. Take a listen. A lot of these young girls want to be looked at that way. They're college students. They're sorry for their job, but they're fresh out of college. They have student loans, so they have debt. And they've been left maybe in a bad relationship that really put them underwater and bills and student loans and they really can't 
pick themselves back up from them. Plus being independent, not having a boyfriend, not having someone to be with. Plus the idea of what a girl wants to go ahead and get spoiled and wants to have something where it's whatever kind of designer, clothes or jewelry or whatever it is where it's just spending money just to spend money. It is the idea where a high-priced prostitute or a sex worker will do the exact same thing, except they want to go ahead and live that kind of life without doing the part. So there's this delusion now of a lot of younger women that are modern, and they think, well, you know, they have such pretty privilege that they don't have to worry about getting laid. If a guy wants to fuck them, they're not going to get to do it because the girl thinks they can go and hold off, and they don't have to do anything for it. But that's and I'm just saying, that, mo- that point was made, and we've talked about delusion for months on this program, this five months ago, and it still holds today. So... Keep that in mind there that we got this and the blackmail because it's now just, just not the fact that a woman doesn't want to put out if they're a sugar baby. Well, there's a blackmail as well. Now we know there's scamming. We've talked about scamming from the guys from the, for the woman's point of view. Okay. But it also goes to the other side. There was a story that came out back in July about blackmail by sugar babies when online sex and romance leads to blackmail. And professor Robert Weiss makes the point of this and says that sugar daddy relationships are couched in language that legitimizes them. When sugar daddies try to end it, there's going to be blackmail that can start. And this is what happened here. So they talk about a story about a man who's 30 years married. His, he and his wife are well known. He has a secret life and he's had relationships with other women hooked up. Flings were never serious, but his last conquest was someone you met on a sugar daddy site compromising sexts and texts documented their entire affair. Jack paid rent on her luxury apartment. This person they're calling Jack a monthly allowance of $5,000. And he would secretly siphon money from his retirement account. After a year, Jack is ready to move on. Likes the sugar baby experience, which makes him feel important and special, but wants something new. Now, while he wants to break it off and have nothing to impinge on his real life, he doesn't have a problem with breaking it off because it's not important to him. It's a hookup. But for the sugar baby, the relationship was a business arrangement. And in her mind, she now deserves what she calls a buyout. She blackmails him, says $100,000 or she shares the evidence with Jack's wife. Along with the threat, there comes a reminder that a divorce will cost Jack a lot more than what the sugar baby is asking for. It's real. The relationships are couched in a language that legitimizes them. Basically, rich men are expected to either mentor or spoil a student, a struggling actress, a young entrepreneur, a secret lover, or whatever. So even though the relationship is mostly financial and sexual, it is easy to pretend that the arrangements are not prostitution. In fact, it would be difficult to prosecute under most prostitution statutes. But it's... uh, Now, the simple sad truth, he says, that internet dating sites are rife for predators, Anyone not just sugar daddies can be taken. And in traditional scamps, it starts with someone in a, it was in a foreign country or at least far away. Things get serious. The scammer wants to come visit but can't afford a plane ticket or has a family member needing emergency surgery or whatever. Remember we heard that story before? But these relationships are by nature highly sexual. The sugar baby will send pictures or videos asking for similar pictures or videos in return. The sugar baby learns where the sugar daddy works, where he's married, where he has kids, lives in more. This is the part where guys want to just get in and out because this is the, this is the risk that's being done. It's the scam that goes back to them. And that's the part that you know, got to be considered about and has to be worried about, but it's going across on both sides. So we don't have to talk anymore about the sugar daddy, sugar baby thing, because bottom line is I bring this point up because it's like, you could take the risk, go for it. It's depraving, the, it's depravity and debauchery at its best. But does it get you anywhere? You're doing it because, guys, you think you're going to be able to go and hook up with a girl and you could just, like, go along with it and maybe you don't have to go ahead and come out of it with too much money out of your pocket. And the women, they think they're going to be able to get some big pay out of this and they're not going to have to go and do anything to put out. Well, both sides are wrong. And this also becomes an issue because the guys and girls are not able to go get together and just be in relationships because the relationship aspect for both of them by this point has gone bad. There's a reason both sides are doing this. And if you realize there are more and more doing this all the time, 
when you look at the stories that are out there and you say, you know, how many they're out there? Could you imagine how many we have out there? When you think about how many of there have been out there so far and how many they're out there anyway, I want to take some stats real quick, just to give you an idea how many people are involved in this. As of 2017, 3.25 million Americans signed up to Seeking Arrangement. We know that's gone up a lot more. And of the people that are on there, th- this is a YouGov poll that actually talked about the fact that the word sugar baby has been understood by 61% of U.S. adults. And those who are currently in college or have been to college are more likely to know what a sugar baby is, likely due in part to the high concentration of sugar babies on many university campuses. 70% of those with a four-year degree are familiar with sugaring. Listen, you're talking about young women, young women in their prime of their beauty and their youth that have gone through high school, that have gone through bad toxic relationships or just gone, just gone through bad relationships that just didn't go anywhere. And that's the part of where the parenting issue's got to be, it's something that's got to be addressed. We got to see that there. And on top of that, the hookup culture could go when you're younger. I mean, you, you're going out with a boyfriend or girlfriend and you decide to go ahead and have sex. Okay, well, there you go. But there's got to be a fair deal to all this. Like, I mean, men and women have to come to the fact that they need to be sexually understanding. They need to understand what sex is by the time they get to college and when they're in high school. The sex education under, and it gives them the ramifications of what they will be getting into by having sex. And then understanding if they're going to have sex, hey, you want to fool around, fool around, have a condom on. You know, we know that kids are having sex. We know that, you know, teenagers are having sex. We know that college students are having sex. So get them prepared for it and realize that the other part is, is that, you know what, there are people that you get to meet and experience yourself in these sexual esca- in these escapades that, you know what, okay, somebody you might want to have sex with, but you're not romantically involved with, and you know the difference. And if you don't want to do that, which there are plenty, then don't compromise who you are just to go ahead and get laid. If you want to go ahead and get married and then have kids and have all the sex you want and do it the way that, you know, most religions would want and most people would want to go ahead and see happen, then do it that way. But don't sell yourself short. And if you're going to hook up and realize that you don't hold on to somebody that you're not necessarily interested in. For some people, they want to go ahead and find the entry into sex. And if they don't like what happens after sex, okay, fine, move along. But that's the part that we look at on a constant basis. Like, well, you know, dating is not doing well at all. And there are so many young men and women that are not dating at all. They're single, they're on their own. And, the ones that are actually hooking up are the ones that are probably the prettiest or the most successful, the most successful men, most eligible men and the women. There are plenty of eligible women, but they all want a small percentage of the men out there with all the other guys. Personality no longer cuts it. And just, you know, being able to have a good time with a woman doesn't make it cut either because the delusion has been brought into play. And for some women, they don't they, they don't realize they that that what they've been told about what they should expect from a man is not working. So some of them are going to go the route and say, "Well, I'm going to use my pretty privilege to go ahead and hook up with a girl, uh, hook up with a guy, find a sugar daddy. I'm going to go after somebody older, more mature that will have the money that will spend it on me." That's pretty shitty, man. I don't like to see this of, of men and women out there that this is what they're going through. But it's happening. But the dating culture is not much better at all. I want to start take a story from ChicagoReader.com that talks about the world of sugar babies and you know, sugar dating has been gaining popularity. And they go through all the issues about being a sugar daddy and sugar baby and you know just the safety of it, negotiating with the sugar daddy. And that's fine, but the thing is that, you know. They, they should go ahead and be able to do that. That there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, the idea of, they talk about the rise of hookup culture, exploring the, the shift from becoming 
a sugar baby successfully. Like part of it is that the rise of hookup sites. And I'm like, wow, that's just not good. But that's where we are right now. It's like in the story, they talk about the fact of hookup culture, but they go right into a story about sugar babies and sugar daddies and going that route. I mean, I don't like it, but you know, what are you going to do? And then there's the part about first dates. A story came out from insider.com about women that will take the, da- the traditional dating apps and use them to be as a sugar baby. They want to create the sugar daddy, sugar baby dynamic to a guy that's not even aware that it's happening. But here's a story that really does go ahead and make the point about, okay, a guy I met on a dating app took me on a fancy first date when it didn't go anywhere. It confirmed money couldn't buy connection. Why is it that women don't want to have connection? Why is it they want to go ahead and take the effort of putting their heart into somebody? I understand that some of the part is going to be because the guys that are connecting with are bad. But I also think it's just that some of the women, the, the, the way they choose Partly peer pressure, partly thinking that, you know, there's aesthetics that are going to create the connection, the money, the looks, you know, this kind of thought process that that the best they're going to get, that they deserve somebody of a certain level, a certain stature, a certain clout. So in the story, she mentions that she went out on a first date, never expected something so special, but it was straight out of the movies. Uh, she says coffee or end of day drinks was fine, but she went with a guy in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and they met on Bumble. So he takes her out. He's dressed to the nines and picks her up and they go in time for a reservation. He made at a French restaurant server seated her and him. The conversation picked up right where they left off from text message. So they never talked on the phone? Ooh, that's not good. I wasn't complaining. He did most of the talking, but I wasn't complaining. The food was great. I was always enjoyed listening. We connected on everything from hobbies, such as reading, the dream travel destinations, to the struggles and joys of being the older sibling. A shared love of fitness also had us recommending fitness classes and hiking trails to the other. At one point of the meal, he did say one thing that left me slightly taken aback. He advised me on how I could leave my boring career for something else if I acted fast. I thought it was strange as I hadn't expressed any discontent with my career choice. But I brushed aside the comment as we wrapped dinner and headed back to his car. Then he told me that the night had just begun. So a few minutes of banter while he drove, they arrived at a, arrived at a wine bar as luxurious as the restaurant we had just left. He, she sa- he says that wine gave her headaches. He made sure to arrange for an alternative drink not included on the menu. At this point, we're well into planning more dates, including visit to Holland on houses on Halloween. We left the bar, and I thought we'd go our separate ways to continue the conversation over text the next day. But he had one last thing plan, planned to visit, a visit to his favorite speaker spot. His favorite secret spot, the tallest hill overlooking the city, close enough to the core of the city with twinkling lights below, yet far enough from their brightness that we could see sparkling stars in the sky above. It felt like we were getting to the level of first dates I'd seen only in romantic comedies. But there was a lone bench we settled down for hours of chatting. But this is where things went downhill. It seemed that he loved talking about work because this conversation went back to our careers. He was a recent chiropractor graduate who had been rejected from medical school, which is why he felt it justified the importance of his chosen field. After exhausting the topic of careers, we moved on. She makes makes the point that both of them are of Indian descent. And he asks... If she could, she could make round rotis, a dish, cuisine, right? And she says, this is a question that's often asked to suss out whether a girl will make a suitable wife. I was shocked that he asked it, especially on a first date. It felt misogynistic and weird. We stayed in text message for a, couple, for a few more months, even though she says these were red flags. Then he suddenly ghosted me. That's not so unusual, but what baffles me is that he planned something so lavish for her first date was that... Just this M.O. in search of a suitable match, I won't ever get the answer. But I guess this is all just, you just can't go on the most luxurious state of your life, but it doesn't guarantee a lasting connection. I think he was trying to go ahead and put some kind of impression. And 
making the point that her career and what she was doing with herself, she could do better with herself. A bit manipulative, it sounds like to me. But also kind of a shot because he wasn't happy about what happened with his own job, right? And I think the story does book a point where she says she wasn't worried about where the date was going to go. But this is the part where she took him to the date to go to the French restaurant, the wine bar, and the spot overlooking the city. He was trying to create an impression to, to where he thinks he's going to create a moment that's going to be memorable from the beginning so that when he gets to her, he'll always have this moment to share with her that she's always going to remember, something very romantic. That's what he was trying to do. But his conversation wasn't romantic. But it shouldn't have been either. Like for the first date, that's over the top. One thing I always learned for myself was I did for about what? Nine months, I forget one year. Like I remember all the way through up into the holidays, like January to September, I kept taking girls out on a dinner date, the first date. I spent a lot of money on those dates. Not much, but it was like still at, which is what, uh, 15, 20 years ago. And I was spending what? 50 to a hundred dollars per date. No drinks. Cause I wouldn't drink on a date. Cause I was always driving to a girl in another city. Like I was always driving from where I live in South Florida and I was driving down sometimes 20, 40 miles South, sometimes North to meet a girl, but I was chasing and I needed to put a good impression. And I thought that's what I would do. And the guy probably wanted to go ahead and put her in a place where she felt a little bit inferior to make her question herself. And to go to him for guidance, something where it was like some kind of a mental mind fuck. That's what it was. So I don't question the fact that she realizes that there were a lot of red flags and she kept talking to him. That wasn't good. There were red flags. Absolutely. She's right. But the fact that the first date had to be something so lavish in the first place, the guy's an idiot because he thought that that's what he needed to go and do to put together a date like that because he thinks, well, he has to do that just to go and get in close to her. And he was trying to go through the couple of dates and probably has a three date rule, you know, before he gets to have sex with her. So he was trying to go and put some impression across that he thinks would have worked. But this is where he was playing to a woman's delusion, thinking that he needed to go and take her to a French restaurant, take her to a wine bar. But the wine bar was meant to be like to get her drunk, to hopefully get her home to bed, his bed, their bed, hotel, whatever. So this guy had a plan to try to like wine and dine and get what he wanted. And then the spot overlooking the city was just like a second attempt, his second chance to try. That's what it looks. That's what it sounds like to me. And he tried and it failed. And it's stupid. Where have we come become right now when we have these kind of things going on and guys and girls can't find a way to really hook up with each other and really enjoy each other's company. It's like it's bullshit. But hookup culture shouldn't be happening so late. Like, I mean, you date somebody and you move along. That's fine. Like the dating and moving along. When some people will just like some women will go ahead and go with a high school sweetheart, hold on to them because like, well, if they allow the sex to happen and they lose their virginity to them, then they feel like they need to hold on to that person to hold on to their prudishness, which is also a mistake. There's got to be a, a point where you get together, you f- get a feel for each other with no strings attached. That doesn't mean we have to have sex right away. You can make out, you can do other things, but it doesn't mean you need to go ahead and go right to sex. There's a lot of other things you can do before you get there. You need to go. You don't need to make the home run, guys, when you're young. You want to go first, second, third, base? Sure. You don't have to go all the way. Because you got to remember what the risk is when you do that, right? I'm talking about guys, girls, teens and 20s. You want to go ahead and, you know, fool around a little bit? Go for it. But sex has got to be important. And you can't use it as a tool where guys need to go and be paying for it. We shouldn't have to go through that. But the women, you should also realize that if you're not going to be serious about it, then, and you're going to expect something of this for nothing, that you're, you're trying to go and play high school tricks as an adult. Like, sure, you can have a boy that will go and, you know, spend time with you and it's monogamous because that's high school. 
But you think you can still play that same trick when you're, you know, in college or you're out of college or when you're out of high school and you graduated. You think you can still play that game? It doesn't work. Stop doing it. I don't know what you do after that. But, I mean, for me, I'm trying to target the younger people out there before they get to the point. If you got, if some of you guys out there and you're with a girl and your friend zone, realize the friend zone's there. And if you're not going to get anything that you want out of him or her, well then bow out and f- go on and find someone else that will respond to you differently. Be more affectionate, right? Something. You don't have to go this route and continue to just think that you have to be the friend or have the monogamous thing because you think, well, maybe something will come from it. Maybe that, you know, the hookup will happen after a while. No, you're either going to hook up right away or not. But there's something to be said about hooking up with your younger. No real commitment to it. Just get a feel for each other. And if you decide to go and fool around, don't go all the way to sex. But you can go to first, second, or third base and be a little depraved. And debaucherous.